queer politics is something that is very close to my heart, so I greatly appreciate um, your audience here. Um, but yeah, so in on November 8th, 2018, the United States held their midterm elections. Um, in this election, it bore the most diverse group of candidates that our nation has ever seen throughout history. In this Congress, we elected the first Palestinian American to serve, the youngest woman to serve thus far, and the first Native American woman to serve. And many other firsts were made just from one single batch of candidates. Um, now, leading up to that 2018 election, we heard a lot of talk about this blue wave that was expected to come. We expect what it meant was that it was expected of the Democrats to win in both or at least one House of Congress, and that's pretty much exactly what happened. They won, had a net gain in the House of Representatives, but suffered a net loss in the Senate. Therefore, after balancing their successes and their shortcomings, um, it was unofficially rebranded as the Blue Ripple rather than the Blue Wave. So. There was another wave that came crashing onto the shores of our nation's capital that I'd like to focus on. So not only was this group of candidates diverse in race, ethnicity, gender, and religion, there were sec uh, sexual identity was actually a very key identifier among many candidates running for office around the nation. According to the LGBTQ Victory Fund, which is an organization dedicated to bringing in more qu openly queer candidates into American politics, um, over 400 people with queer identities ran for some type of office somewhere in the nation. 400. That's not only shocking, but just plain out astonishing. And to further that astonishment, a large fraction of those LGBTQ candidates ended up winning in their elections. So, because of that, the 2018 midterm elections were aptly renamed as the Rainbow Wave. Again, because of the unprecedented and unexpected number of candidates that ended up winning and being ushered into Capitol Hill. So, um, aside, w I'm sorry. <laughs> um, we elected, for example, our first openly gay governor over in Colorado, Jared Schultz. In addition to that, we elected Kirsten Sinema, the first openly bisexual senator to serve thus far from the unexpected state of Arizona. And then Danica Rowan, Virginia's first transgender woman to be elected and then seated as um, in Virginia's state house. Even here in Alabama, we elected Neil Rafferty, an openly gay man to serve as a representative for one of our districts here in the Alabama House of Representatives. Now, Andrew Reynolds, who is a political, American political scientist, says there's clear evidence to suggest that um, including marginalized groups in politics specifically benefits the group that they belong to via policy. That claim is not only sound, but it's also substantiated in a study conducted by the Trevor Project. For those of you that may not know, the Trevor Project is an organization that works to decrease the number of LGBTQ youth suicides throughout the nation. In this study, what they found was that in areas where same-sex marriage is legal or where and or where there are um, policy protections against discrimination for pe those with queer identities, the queer the, the teen suicide rate actually decreases substantially and queer youth specifically feel more comfortable relating to others and just more comfortable in their personal life. And it's because they feel respected, validated, and um, and normalized rather than ostracized. So aside from policy implications, there's a large component of representation that's not quite so easy to measure, and that's inspiration. So much like the glass ceiling that women face today in society, queer folk face what's called the lavender ceiling. Same premise, just a different color. Um, but now, it finally seems like there are cracks in this lavender ceiling appearing in American politics. But what does that mean? What, what could it lead to, and how could it bring us to a better nation? To explore these, these questions, let's take a step back in time a little bit. I have a great friend who has a daughter named Ashley. Ashley's great, she's brilliant, she's super funny, and she's very quick-witted for a, a child. <laughs> When I met Ashley, she was six years old. 
And like every six-year-old who just like discovered what a job is, she wants to ask literally every single person that she meets, what do you want to be when you grow up? I mean everyone. She even asked her great-grandmother. <laughs> um, so when I met Ashley, it was at the beginning of like this stage of her life. So of course she asked me what it is that I want to be when I grow up. I thought it would be cool to jokingly, half-jokingly say, I'm going to run for president one day. Sidebar, um, I do want to be potentially able to consider running for president one day, but that's beside the point. So I told her as a joke, but she loved the idea so much that every single time that I've seen Ashley since that year, which was like 2014, she has asked me every single time, are you still running for president? Still gonna run for president? Every single time my answer is, as of right now, yep, still planning to run. Her usual responses will either be smile, laugh at me, which kind of hurts my feelings a little bit. Um, she'll tell me something crazy that I never knew about dolphins to change the subject really quick, or she'll run off, play, and that's the end of our conversation. All of these things I've become accustomed to um, in terms of her responses. So there was one day that took me by surprise, and it was after July 2016 when um, Ashley was eight and Hillary Clinton had just won the Democratic nomination for President of the United States. My friend and I are super involved in politics, so of course, we wanted to have like a celebratory dinner type thing to celebrate a woman accomplishing such a feat. So over dinner, we were talking about it, how awesome it was, how great it was, because it was. And then we go to watch her acceptance speech, rewatch it, I should say. Of course, I was watching it live as it happened. Um, but that's when Ashley came in from playing outside, hugged me like always, and I always know if politics is a topic of mine and her mother's conversation, the next thing out of Ashley's mouth as soon as she realizes that is, are you gonna run for president? <laughs> still gonna run for president? She didn't fail me. She still asked me and I still responded the same. As of right now, yes. But her response this time was a little bit different. She looked at the screen where Hillary was speaking, looked back at me and said, me too. Now at that moment, I didn't fully process what I think she was feeling because it was my ego that was like, oh, obviously it's because of me that she wants to run for president. Has to be, yeah. So I replied with, oh, so you wanna be like me now when you grow up. And I told you she was funny. I told you she was quick. She snarled her, no her nose, backed up and said, oh no, no. I wanna be like her and pointed to the screen where Hillary was speaking. Though my feelings may have been hurt, my ego deflated a little bit. I'll never forget that moment. Um, I still have chills as I'm thinking about it right now because here I was talking to this now eight-year-old who now had the confidence to, that she could be president one day just because she saw someone actually running for president one day. I s and I have to like fight back tears when I think about it too. It's such a great moment in my life. Um, but because this rainbow wave is so new, and because these politicians just began their terms a short three months ago, that type of impact is not necessarily so easy to measure. Um, but if we can understand the power of how seeing powerful women in powerful positions in government, if we can understand that impact and what it has on young girls, we can understand the likely impact that having this new era of queer representation is going to have on queer children and it's going to likely be the same. It's going to be that inspiration, that power and that confidence instilled in them just by seeing someone who identifies the same way that they do or looks the same way that they do, whatever it may be. Um, throughout, um, so when you see someone who represents you, there's more than just someone making laws for you. It's powerful and it's inspiring. And that's the power of representation. Yes, it inherently brings a whole new perspective, a whole new idea to the table, but the important things are the Im immeasurable things. And when you look at the impact that, it's ha that seeing a woman has had on young girls, again, it's easy to understand what type of confidence is going to be instilled in these, in these children. So personally, for me, Pete Buttigieg, who is currently a presidential hopeful right now, has led me to believe that there, there can be an openly gay man sitting in the White House as president. That in, in and of itself is something I never thought would ever happen even in my lifetime. 
at any point despite my aspirations to also be president one day. Um, but I am, it's so interesting to see just how seeing someone that you relate to, can the impact it can have on your life. It's because when you feel validated, when you feel respected, and when you feel normalized, you may not realize how powerful it is to feel normalized if you are someone that's never faced marginalization or discrimination at any point. Um, but when you see someone who faces the same struggles as you, doing the same things that you want to one day, you're going to eventually realize that you're capable of those same great and incredible feats. And that is the power, again, of representation. By validating the queer identities, we're telling, or we're diminishing the teen suicide rate by 4%. By respecting queer identities, we're pushing everyone to be their best selves because everyone is allowed to be their best selves. And by normalizing queer identities, we're telling everyone that the American dream we were all told about as we grew up is attainable for anyone. And that is something that I hope everyone remembers today, that representation is inspiration and inspiration is power. Again, my name is Tyler Goodwin. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. <laughs>